Hi guys! Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening! I'm Lisa Axier, your hair doctor, and that's right, today is our cyber reading, our book tour continues. And as you know, we are in the Black Woman's Guide to Beautiful Hair, and we've been touring our book for the last several months. I mean, it's been months, but we are in the portion on the scalp. And I wanted to talk today about chemical burns. Chemical burns, yes, this will be part three of the scalp, and we'll speak about chemical burns. And we're going to speak about some other things like dandruff or dry scalp, which one is it? And then if I have time, I'm going to talk about one one woman's story. And this is all in my book. Um, and I'm excited about it today. So let's get started. Chemical burns. Chemical, and those of you who transition, a lot of women who are transitioning and who want to transition, you know, a lot of times we're running from something. And the biggest thing that I find with patients who come in and say they want to transition is that they're running away from relaxers. We all know it. Chemical burns are high-level scalp damage. You know, we talked about low-level and scalp damage. And high-level scalp damage are chemical burns. And why do we say that? Because chemical burns will affect both the epidermis and could affect the dermis, which makes that dangerous a high-level scalp damage. Chemical burns happen when the scalp has been worn and thin, usually due to improper scalp care. So when a person says, well, you know, I'm sensitive to relaxers. Well, a sensitive scalp equals a damaged scalp. Your scalp, your epidermis, if all the layers from the basal to the cornea layer of the epidermis are in place, then you should not have a sensitivity to relaxers. Okay, I know some of you are thinking, well, I could have an allergy to, or I could be allergic, in other words. Ah, uh, well, there's a problem there, but you're going to notice redness, fine bumps, the swelling, things of that sort. But if you have a tingle and an itch and a little burn, like someone's had something really hot on your scalp, then you are suffering from a chemical burn because your scalp was sensitive, and the reason your scalp was sensitive because it was damaged. And the damaged scalp came from your scalp being worn and thin. And why did that happen? That happened because your scalp was not getting the proper care that it needed to protect and preserve it. And I know, again, some of you are thinking, well, some people just can't wear relaxers. Well, I'm sure that's the case in some cases. Rare. I, and I've been in this industry for 30 plus years and practicing as a trichologist for most of those years. And what I have found on a study that I conducted called Scalp and Skin is that when you relax your hair, you're supposed to relax the hair, not the scalp, but be, with hair being an appendage of the skin, you will get some of that touching of the scalp with the uh, relaxer. So with that being said, you want to make sure that you have a healthy scalp. And your scalp should be okay for the period of time, not burning in other words, for the period of time it takes to straighten your hair. So if you're burning with relaxers, you haven't made the transition, you're still relaxing your hair, that's not a bad thing, but if you're burning with them, that's a bad thing. Okay? It's okay to have your relaxers if that's what you choose. It is your choice. And I know sisters out there, natural, my natural sisters, we want everybody natural. Yes, we do. But there's some women that aren't. And there are sisters too, and they need support. So I'm a trichologist, and I'm out here to help all. Okay? So just tell your sisters out there, relaxers, to tune in to this particular YouTube because show because I am going to talk about chemical burns because chemical burns if you're not careful you're going to end up with more problems so let's move on when the scalp has become worn and thin that's usually due to the improper scalp care as I said in many cases the scalp has been exposed to either high pH shampoos improper application of certain chemical treatments it could be color it could be relaxer, it could be other things. So my natural hair ladies who are wearing color, you may have natural kinky hair, but does not mean it's completely natural. 
and that's okay, but you've got to take care of it. Also, other sometimes exposed to overexposed to chemical treatments, I mentioned that. In some of the studies that I conducted, as I said earlier, on on the effects of chemicals and how the scalp and strands uh, uh, react to them when they're improperly applied. When you leave a chemical on for a period of time, different lengths of time, I find that the chemical, a chemical relaxer will completely dissolve the scalp and the strand. What happens, isn't that something? That's why what makes a chemical relaxer so dangerous. What happens when you get, I'm not, just try, I'm not trying to scare you guys, okay? I just want you to be educated because so often we get these services and treatments, even some styles, natural ladies, we get and we know nothing about the effects of them. So we end up with our hairline gone because of traction. So the, and using brushes, we end up with using these nylon brushes, creating these microscopic tears so we never get this long hairline. We always have this short hairline. So you have issues, things that we must deal with as well. But as it relates to chemicals, let me tell you what happens with a chemical relaxer. When a chemical relaxer is applied to your hair, the first thing you want to do with the chemical relaxer is to soften the hair. So if you hear people say, well, I want a texturizer, so I have to go buy a certain chemical. Well, a texturizer is the same chemical as a straight relaxer. That's right. The same chemical. A texturizer is a technique of relaxing the hair. That's simply put. It's a technique of relaxing the hair. It's the same chemical. So the first thing when a relaxer goes on your hair, it begins to soften the hair. Now, why does it not work all the time with just softening? It goes to straight. Then that's because of porosity. So this is why when you put these chemicals on as well, ladies, you have to have healthy hair. Just because your hair is natural. I've had some of my patients decide, well, you know, I want to go relax. I want to have my hair relaxed. So they come in. They say, well, I'm going to get an analysis first, and I want to see what you think. And I show them where their porosity is so poor that that relaxer is going to absorb quickly, and their texturized technique will be shot. It will not happen. It will be non-existent. So the texturized is where the actual relaxer softens the hair and brings it from a kinky pattern and it opens it up just a little bit to a more of a wave pattern. Well, that's what I call fantasy natural hair. <laughs> if your hair is naturally extremely kinky or if it's not even like my medium degree of kinkiness and you want your hair to wave more and I wore a texturizer for many years. It was actually my favorite thing to do with my hair because I had a lot more versatility manageability, a whole bunch of things. But since then, I've done all these studies with natural hair, so I don't have to have a texturizer. I may do another one one day. I did enjoy my texturizer, where it's a technique of relaxing the hair, where it removes a certain degree of the kinkiness from the hair so that there's a wave pattern. But you have to have good porosity. You, in other words, the ability of the hair to absorb chemicals, that has to happen in a controlled manner. And if your hair is over porous, then it is not going to uh, relax that hair in a controlled manner. So it will go from kinky to straight instead of from kinky to soften, which is texturized. And then moving on, which brings me to the next part. Once a relaxer has softened the hair, then it moves on to straight, which is, most, which is the reason why most women who get relaxers get it. Because they want a straight, a permanently straight form to the hair. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, my natural ladies. Let's not get mad at them. Let's just know that you have to be educated on how to relax your hair if you're going to wear a relaxer. Okay? So you're going to end up with problems. Not only chemical burns, and we're going to get back to that, but you're also going to end up with overprocessed hair. And we're going to talk about that more when we get to the part on the hair. But back to the chemical. So it starts with softening then straightening and then what happens after that because the chemical has the ability a chemical relaxer to thin out the hair so the next part will be thinning so you soften straighten thin which is why so many women who have relaxed hair will have longer hair but then they'll have this thin hair you feel your hair and the bulk is gone 
It's not near as bulky as it once was. Not good. So you have what we call a unnatural texture change. That's right. And I know the show is about chemical burns, but I'm going to get to that. But I got I couldn't do it without actually talking about this relaxer. And then what happens? It starts to dissolve. So you go from straight hair, excuse me, kinky hair, to softened hair, texturized, to, to straight hair, to thin hair, to dissolved hair. So that's when you start seeing long, short, long, short, broken areas because your chemical is actually literally eating away, dissolving that fiber. Well, how does that happen? And some patients will say, I'll get my perms every six weeks. Well, most of the cases, the, the actual technician or stylist, unknowingly, they're not doing it intentionally, they're overlapping. And if you think about it, if you process hair that's already relaxed, straight, then what's going to happen? You're going to overprocess because if it's straight, what's the next step? Thin. And if you continue to overlap, what's the next step? Dissolve. So that's how we lose our hair. Simply put, okay. But well, we're going to talk more on that. But what happens? Let's move on. I again, I've conducted these studies. Now, what happens with the scalp? The same thing. When you relax the hair and the epidermis, so the cornea layer of the epidermis is worn then in, in the already or dehydrated or damaged, the scalp becomes even thinner, begins to ooze and may even bleed. Now there are no blood vessels in the epidermis, so when you're oozing and bleeding, where are you? In the dermis. And what's in the dermis? At that point, you might have to see a dermatologist because what's in the dermis? In the dermis, there's the actual follicle, the portion of the follicle where the hair is developed. So scar tissue can, can develop and you can have some permanent loss. So you really, really, really have to be careful. You can have thinning and even baldness. But what's the process? We burn, we ooze, we bleed, the skin tries to heal, it starts to itch and flake, we scratch, we lift dandruff. You see the vicious cycle? So we end up destroying that skin, keeping it sensitive. So by the time it's time for our next relaxer, we're still a little sensitive because we never ever created the environment for healing, so then we burn again. So we're burning all the time. So over a period of time, we cause a horrible aging process on the hair and scalp, and so we end up with what? Baldness, alopecia of some sort. And that is really an inflammation. Cicatricial is one of the types of alopecia that we speak about all the time. And at our, be sure to tune in if you have not seen our um, hair symposium where Dr. Robert Jackson will speak a little bit more on cicatricial, which is inflammatory fo uh, follicular cells. Those inflammatory cells cause the actual follicle internally to scar. It's horrible, but it originates externally. That's why it was initially called hot comb alopecia. But it was initially called that because most people were burning their scalp or the epidermis causing the internal portion and around the external to become inflamed. And once that happened, they, there were problems with losing the follicle. Now we're finding scarring follicles. Now we're finding that people are burning with relaxers, some cases scalp disease left untreated, they're chronically scratching and because of the chronic itch and it's horrible so you're still getting the same type so we threw these researchers for a loop and, they, and some people were saying well I don't use a hot comb well you're not using a hot comb but you're using relaxers well I don't use a relaxers, you're not using relaxers but you're keeping a very filthy dirty scalp and you're getting all these scalp problems chronic itch and you're digging in your scalp and you're causing your epidermis to become worn wearing the dermis and then you're inflaming the scalp so one way or the other you're getting damage to that follicle internally and the inflammation develops and the scar tissue develops around the actual follicle so ladies it is serious and it's serious and it's crucial to take care of your scalp and chemical burns come when you do not have a healthy scalp and how do you create that? And we're going to talk about that. Hold on, hold on. For many years, women have used these so-called no-lie chemicals applied, um, not knowing that it may be adding to the problem. No-lies don't burn, but you still get dehydration. Hmm. 
when it's when that when they turn to their stylist for help, they realize that their hair care professionals also believe that no lie relaxers are milder than, milder than chemicals. But a lot of professionals now are hip to that. They know that they are not milder. They know there's no such thing as a no lie relaxer. But all chemicals have some form of lie, whether it's uh, sodium, lithium, potassium, calcium, hydroxide, lime. Uh, and it have, they have the potential for harm because it is a chemical. Period. End of discussion. That's what it is. If a chemical is used properly by a trained professional, and you want to speak with your professional about that, okay? When your hair and scalp um, is a trained professional, then your hair and scalp will not become damaged because she's going to do all the preliminary things, the, the inspections of the scalp. She's going to make sure that she pre-treats your scalp. She's going to make sure that your scalp is healthy. And if you have a chronic itch, do not chemically treat your hair, okay? All right. Although the relaxer is applied to the hair, as I said, it's going to get on the actual scalp. So, ladies, remember that a sensitive scalp comes from a damaged scalp, and a damaged scalp comes from a worn, thin epidermis. So we have to look at what's what's on our scalp, how our scalp feels. Notice the symptoms. How do we feel? If you have an itchy scalp that's saying that there's something wrong. An itchy scalp may mean that you need to go shampoo. It may mean that your scalp is dry. It may mean your scalp is injured. It can mean a number of things. But you do not relax an itchy scalp. You just don't do it. You don't relax a flaky scalp. You don't relax a scalp that's thin and oozing, sores. You don't do it. Okay, you can cause more problems. Okay, we're gonna try to get a couple of more things in. We will be able to get in information on on the dandruff, dandruff on the scalp. But you know what? I want to stop there. I'm going to keep this one a little short. And we're, next week, we're going to talk about dandruff or dry scalp. And then I'm going to talk about one of my patient's story and some of the things that happened to her. And then we'll get into negative buildup. we got a lot of stuff to happen. But I want to use the end of this to answer some of your questions. I said I was going to keep it short. I never do that, right? But I want to respond to the questions you had uh, and the comments that you had last on the last video so that you'll keep those comments coming. I do want to address them. One of you said, thank you so much for sharing. You are so welcome. Someone else said, you are such a beautiful uh, person inside and out. May God continue to clothe you in grace, love, and mercy all. You are so darling for saying that. The next person said, very informative. This. Thanks, Dr. Akberry. I would just like to know how to reduce shedding and breakage. My hair seems too fragile each time I pull strands. They come out. Thanks again in advance. One thing you want to look at is deep conditioning. Deep conditioning and what we call plussing. Plus conditioning is where you use protein moisture conditioner combined. And on my website, I have a great deep conditioner. But if you have a good deep conditioner, you want to make sure you have protein and moisture. You need strength and hydration. You want to sit under the dryer. Put that conditioner on your hair. Then you want to put a plastic cap on. Wait about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, take the plastic cap off. Notice. The conditioner has gone into the hair. We need to push conditioner in that hair until it stops taking it. Okay? So it throws up. <laughs> well, you want to put the, after you put the deep conditioner on for 10 minutes and it's absorbed, you put more on. You work it in, put a plastic cap on, sit on the dryer for 10 minutes and put more on and keep doing that in those intervals, 10 minute intervals until your hair stops absorbing it. Actually, ladies, that's the only way to get true deep conditioning because your hair is not getting what it needs. When you notice that you get, you take your plastic cap off and it looks like your hair absorbed the conditioner. That means it all went in. You want it to go in, but you want, you put more and you want to put it until it stops going in. The heat causes that temperature to rise and it draws the conditioner into the hair. So, medium setting, no sweating on the conditioner. Hmm, I like it. Okay. It says, so what do you recommend? Oh, the other thing is you have to make sure that you are not 
Okay, you got to make sure that you are not. I think I lost that one. Let's go back. You have to make sure that you are not shedding. You are a, you are breaking because shedding could mean something else. If you're naturally shedding, that's okay. You want to save the strands, separate them, make sure that we have natural shedding. If we see bulbs, it's a little club-like tissue on the ends, that's natural shedding. If you don't have that, you have just a little thin piece, a little short pieces, that's or the little balls, that's breakage. Okay? If you have an excessive amount of shedding, then you really want to be seen. You can send those strands in and I can read them under the microscope to see if we're shedding prematurely or you can see a trichologist in your area or even a dermatologist. Okay guys? Alright. Because deep conditioning, if you're naturally, if you're excessively shedding, is not going to help. There may be some underlying problems that you may need to have checked out. Something going on internally. Okay. And this one says, uh, which is better, permanent dye or semi-permanent dye? Well, we don't want to use dye at all, but I know what you're saying. Um, let me talk about permanent. Semi-permanent is just going to deposit color pigment into the cuticle layer. Permanent can deposit or draw color pigments from the cortex. So the semi-permanent will definitely be milder. And she said, I would love to know more about scalp damage and hair loss. Keep listening. You will hear it. Thanks for another valuable video. You are welcome. It says, uh, full of useful and practical information. And she had a couple of questions. Is the PPD in most hair dyes damaging to the hair follicle? Uh, since it's a chemical, can it cause scarring alopecia? Can a person, can a person experience an allergic reaction that reveals itself by through hair loss only as opposed to physical symptoms such as scaling, itching, and tenderness. Wow, that's packed, but let's try to get to all of them. PPD, some people are allergic to it, and so when you have a rash, anytime you use a semi-permanent color or permanent color, you may have an allergic reaction to that, that color, and you'll see redness, rash, discontinue and it should go away see your dermatologist if it doesn't um, can it cause scarring alopecia it cannot cause scarring alopecia unless the area becomes inflamed and that is not treated quickly if it's treat if it's treated properly and quickly then it won't scar and it won't become uh, per a permanent alopecia the next one can experience a reaction. You can experience a reaction, but it shouldn't manifest in hair loss. Only way to manifest in hair loss, because what happens when most people get that little rash after using these uh, colors and after using certain chemicals, they will scratch that rash after a period of time. And again, it's all about the inflammation in, with these types of problems inflaming the actual internal portion of the follicle and it's scarring so that's why that's what would happen um, the itching is it's supposed to be the physical symptoms itching tenderness no no it would you no, no you will have some other symptoms like uh, itching and uh, sometimes tenderness but you definitely will have itching and flaking okay and it says here the next one uh, it sometimes I sometimes have tender spots on my scalp when I press down on certain areas. There is little pain in some areas. There is a pimple in the area, but most cases there is nothing there and it's just tender. What can be what can cause this? I am natural and I shampoo my hair with a pH balanced shampoo every three to four days. Stay with the acid balanced shampoo, 4.5 to 5.5 pH balance is 7. Our hair and scalp is more acidic, so stay with that. The other thing is, the uh, if there's pimples on the scalp and they are persistent, you will need to see a dermatologist. There may be some inflammation there. There also just may be a hair there, maybe something simple. Uh, when you press down on it and it's tender, then something's going on with the skin 
the pain receptors are just responding to whatever's going on. You want to make sure that you're cleaning and hydrating, but you want to hydrate daily so that you won't have that tenderness uh, where the hair is actually, when I say hydrating from the tenderness, your hair sometimes can create what we call webbing, where it pulls the follicle. And if it does in natural hair, we find this a lot. So your part, your hair on the right side of the part pulls the hair on the left side of the part. The hair on the left side of the part pulls the hair on the right side of the part. And then you have problems. Okay, so um, I think we've got one more. Uh, oh no, we have two more. But I'm gonna, I'm out of time. I've got to go to work, guys. I love you so much, and I'll get those other two questions. Thank you so much to God be the glory in Jesus. I will talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.